The story that we're about to hear today is the story of a character called Dear Evan Hansen. It's a, it's a play that's a Broadway hit. And it's about a young child, um, a, a, an early teen, who is facing a great deal of social anxiety. His therapist tells him to write a letter to himself, giving himself a bit of a pep talk. But unfortunately for him, this letter ends up in the wrong hands. It ends up in the hands of Connor Murphy, Cassie Murphy, uh, depending on Act 1 and Act 2, who takes her own life. And what then happens is a series of events that add one lie to the next, to the next, to the next. And this is a play that's about more than just a theatrical presentation. I hope that this is, we hope that this is a play that is going to start a conversation about teen mental health, about social anxiety, about social hierarchy in schools, about social media and what it's doing to our children, but also as parents, a story about what it means to be a single parent, to be a flawed parent, to be struggling to parent, to be coping with grief and loss and life as we try to bring children up in this very difficult world. So ladies and gentlemen, I want you to give a giant round of applause to the very last show of the year ever. Super casual, like she would introduce herself. 
only 10 minutes where I waited for someone to come. Here they come, I said, at any time. I said, did they? No. <laughs> That's the funny part. Seriously, my God. Okay, um, did you, uh, uh, you had a good summer? Well, my team dominated in Capture the Flag. Um, do you want to maybe um, sign my cars? Why are you asking me? I, I thought you were friends. Uh, we're family friends. That's a whole different thing and you know it. <laughs> hey, tell your, tell your mom to tell my mom I was good to you or she won't pay for my car insurance. <laughs> I will, I will. Hey, Cassie, loving the new look. Very serial killer. <laughs> I was kidding. It's a joke. Yeah, no, I was laughing. Can't you tell? Am I not laughing hard enough for you? You're such a freak. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Uh, what? I'm Stop laughing at I'm me. I'm not. You think I'm a freak? I don't. I, I'm not the freak. I, what am I You're the freak. I was
tree and, and, and I fell on it. You were climbing a tree? That was just the saddest thing I've ever heard. Oh my god. <laughs> I know it's. Uh, um, nobody signed your car. I know it's. Uh, I'll sign it? Oh, you don't have to. It's your Sharpie? We can both pretend we have signs. Good point. <laughs> By the way, this is yours. I found it on the printer. Dear Evan Hansen, that's your name, right? Oh, that, that's just, it's just a stupid assignment. <laughs> because there's Zoe? Is this about my sister? No, 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 it's not. It's you wrote this because you knew I would find it. Oh, why would I do that? You so wrote this so that you knew I would find it. You put it on the printer, right? No, I, I you saw that. that was the I my no, no, I didn't. I, you? Did this to me because you know some scared, crazy story about my sister. I would read it, I would freak out, and then you could tell everyone I'm crazy, no, right? I, I didn't. I yes, say it. I, I know, but, uh, but I didn't need that. Please, please, can I just have that back? I. Me 
meet me and Cassie and, and, and our friendship and... <laughs> Still can't believe the terrible news about Act Cassie Murphy. <laughs> what are you going to tell them? I, I mean, I mean, the, the truth, I... The truth... I wouldn't say that we were friends exactly. We were more like acquaintances, but close acquaintances. <laughs> the truth. Really, you are going to the Murphy's house and you're going to tell them that the only thing they have left of their daughter is some weird love letter that you wrote to yourself? <laughs> um, we were in chemistry together. I'm pretty sure. You know you can go to jail for this, right? Uh, if you're caught. But, but I didn't do anything. I just... He was also... Um, he was in my English class in 10th grade. Mom was positive. Yeah, I hate to tell you this, Evan, but you might have already perjured yourself. Wait, isn't that only like uh, under oath? Like, like in a courtroom? Well, aren't you under oath in a way? <laughs> no! <laughs> yeah, she was definitely in my English class. <laughs> Look, do you want to listen to me or do you want to have another meltdown like last year in English class? when you were supposed to give a speech about Daisy Buchanan. But instead you just stood there, staring at your flashcard, going, um, 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 over and over again, like you were having a brain aneurysm. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, uh, well, uh, <laughs> oh, what do you want, just, just skip lie? I, just, I didn't say lie, just nod and confirm. Whatever they say about Cassie, just say, yeah, that's true. Don't make stuff up. And don't contradict. It's foolproof. Literally, nothing I tell my parents is true. And they have no idea. <laughs> Three days ago, Cassie Murphy was here. And now, now, she's gone. But, but her parents, uh, they were so guilty. Her mom, I just, never seen anyone so guilty before. I just, well, it's a good thing you're about to tell her the truth about your love letter. I'm sure that it's your turn, right up. <laughs> if Cassie meant something to you, please retweet. <laughs> or if you just want to talk, private message me. <laughs> At times like these, we could all use a friend. <laughs> Zoe? Wasn't I what you meant? 
a loser, I was gonna say, but uh, nerd works too. <laughs> that was very nice. Well, Cassie wasn't very nice, so that makes sense. Cassie was, she was a complicated person. No, Cassie was a bad person, that's a different. She refused to remember any of the good things. She refused to see anything positive. What were the good things, Mom? Tell me. Zoe! Don't act like you don't agree with me. I don't want to have this conversation in front of our guest right now. What were the good things, Mom? Tell me. There were good things. I remember some good things about Cassie. Like what? <laughs> oh, um, you know what? I, I, it, it doesn't really matter. No, uh, uh, Evan, no, you're going uh, to say something. Go it, ahead. it doesn't matter, really. No, please, we want to hear what you have to say. Well, uh, okay. Uh, so Cassie and, and I, um, we had this um, uh, good time together. <laughs> so, so that, that's what I was thinking about that, that, that day. Um, um, at the apples, yeah, the apples place. She, she took you to the orchard? Yeah, yeah. It was only once, but um, she said the apples were the best. I thought that place closed down years ago. Um, yeah, exactly. So you're bummed because, you know, it's completely closed right now. It's <laughs> can't believe she took you to the orchard. That, that was fun. I bet you two had fun. We used to go there all the time. And we do picnics out there. You and your little sister had that little toy plane you'd fly around until you flew on into the creek. It, it was an emergency landing. <laughs> I bet that was really fun. Yeah, it, it, it really was. <sighs> End of May or early June, this picture perfect afternoon. Shared an ice cream. What was the name of the ice cream place you went there all the time? Alamod. That was it. Alamod. And then they had that homemade hot fudge. We were driving the winding country road at Krabaskupan. Alamod. And then we're there. We'd sit there in the meadows with all the sycamores, and you and your sister would look for four leaf clovers. And an open field, just ran with trees. It was spot and Shoot the breeze like buddies do, quoting songs from our favorite brands and telling jokes no one understands. Just like us. And we talk and take in the view. All we see is a sky forever. It feels like it could go on forever. This way, two friends on a perfect day. I completely forgotten about that place. I guess Cassie didn't, did she? We walk a while and talk about the things we do when we get out of school. Like we'd bike the Appalachian Trail or write a book or learn to sail. Wouldn't that be cool? There was nothing we couldn't discuss. Like people we wish would notice us but never do. He looks around and says to me, there's no one else I'd rather be. And I say, me too. There he goes. Running towards the tallest tree from far across an open field, he screams, follow me. There we go, wondering how the world must, must look from up so high. We climb higher and higher, one foot, then another, one branch, then to another. I climb till the entire sun shines on my face. And then suddenly, I feel the branch give way. Uh, I'm on the ground and my arm goes numb and I look around and she, she's come to get me. She's actually come to get me. And, you know, everything's okay. We could be all right forever this way. This way, two friends, true friends, on a perfect day. Thank you, Evan. Thank you, thank you, thank you.
to know their parents that Cassie was too ashamed to be friends with you in public? Because you're a geek. Well, why would you think that? I, um, you were best friends, but she wouldn't let you talk to her at school. And when you did, she kicked your butt. <laughs> oh my god. I, this is why I thought, what did I tell you, Evan? You just nod and confirm. Well, you, you don't understand. I, I, I got nervous and, and then I started talking and, and then I started talking and I, I just... Uh, you couldn't stop. <laughs> they didn't want me to stop. I just, so, what else did you completely mess up? I, I mean, nothing seriously. I, I told them, you know, emails. Emails. <laughs> well, yeah, so I, I told them that me and Cassie wrote emails to each other. Right. And did you tell them that you had secret email accounts? <laughs> oh, um, maybe. Right. Secret email account. For sending geeky memes. <laughs> Evan Hansen, we've been way out of touch. Uh, things have been crazy. I miss that talking to you as much. I miss punching you in the face. Perfect. Oh my God, why would you write that? Um, I'm just trying to tell the truth. You know, if you're not going to take this seriously, then okay, you need to calm yourself. These emails, they need to show that we were actually friends and we can be completely realistic. There is nothing unrealistic about a woman expressing her feelings. <laughs> Let's go back to it. In fact, some would say there's something quite beautiful. Let's go back, Jared. Okay. I gotta tell you, life without you has been rough. I miss talking about life and other stuff. I love my parents, but every day is another fight. If I stop acting out, maybe everything will be all right? Acting out? Just acting out. Cassie was a walking, talking volcano. This isn't realistic at all. Well, you know, I'm trying to show you, you know, I, I was a good friend, that I, I was supporting her, and then, oh my God. Fine, I'll take your advice. I'll try to be more nice. 
alternative. Wait and see, because all it takes is a little reinvention. It's easy to change if you give it your attention. All you gotta do is believe you can be who you want to be. Sincerely, me. Are we done yet? No, but we got so many minutes. Okay, please stop hyperventilating. I'm not hyperventilating. You have considerable trouble. I reading. don't have considerable trouble. Do you need a paper back to read it? I'm not hyperventilating. <laughs> Dear Cassie Murphy, yes, I also miss her talks. Just take deep breaths and go on walks. No, I'm showing you the picture of the most amazing trees. No, you'll be obsessed with all my forced expertise. Absolutely not. <laughs> Dude, I'm proud of you. Just keep pushing through. You're turning around. I can see. Cause Just wait and see. Because all it takes is a little reinvention. It's easy to change. You give it your attention. All you gotta do is believe you can be who you want to be. Sincerely, me. Dear Evan Hansen, thank you for every note you send. Dear Cassie Ophi, I'm just glad to be a friend. A friend that goes beyond your average kind of bond. You're getting better every day. I'm getting better every day. Keep getting better every, every day. day. This is really me. <laughs> that I found, um, uh, uh, there are more, I mean, uh, me and Cassie, uh, we talk uh, all the time. And it's just, it's difficult to read these. It, it doesn't sound like Cassie. Uh, I'm sorry, you know, I, I shouldn't have it. No, no, just, gosh, I, I don't remember the last time I heard her laugh. Um, yeah, we, you two, you would laugh? Or? Yeah, we laughed all the time. <laughs> Wait, so there are more of these, more emails? Um, yeah, yeah, there's more. We would love to see them. We would love to see everything, wouldn't we? Mm hmm <laughs> Why are you here? Oh, Zoe, wait until you see what Evan brought us. Letters from my sister. How was your first day back? Terrific. Suddenly, everyone wants to be my friend. I'm the dead kid's sister, didn't you know? <laughs> I I'm sure they mean well. Um, I should probably go, so. You're not staying for dinner? I, I can cook something for you. I, I hadn't planned to. I, I'll show you the way out. Well, okay, we'll do, we'll do another time. No, no, you don't have to. No, oh, please, it would be my pleasure. I would love to have you. Show you the way out. Um, <laughs> so, Zoe, uh, how, how was Ben? I, I bet they're happy to have you back, huh? You really don't have to do this. Do what? Just cause Cassie isn't here punching through my doors, screaming on top of her lungs that she's gonna kill me for no reason, doesn't mean that all of a sudden we're a crazy happy family. We're all grieving in our own way, okay? I know how much you miss your sister, we all do. Just, just read this when you're ready. I'm going to bed. Come sit with me. Cynthia. You cannot, you cannot stand to be in a room for five minutes. I'm exhausted. You know, Larry, at some point you're going to have to start. Not now. Just, just read this. She was crying, silly. 
Now she'll never get the chance to know Cassie. <laughs> <laughs> what, what is your friend with Cassie? Not friends exactly, acquaintances, but close acquaintances. <laughs> Before I leave, can I say something? I think I kind of always knew that you and Cassie were friends. You did a good job of hiding it, but I don't know. Sister's pictures. Oh, um, I, I, I was waiting for um. Don't your parents get annoyed you're here all the time? I, I mean, I, I'm not here all the time. I just two nights in a row. Well, it's just that my mom, she, she either works late or is in class. Uh, class for what? Um, she's studying to be a, a paralegal. Uh, where's your dad? Uh, my my dad. Um. Uh, well, my dad. He left when I was seven, so he lives in Colorado, so he doesn't really mind either. Your parents, they're really great. They can't stand each other. They fight all the time. Well, everyone's parents fight. My dad's in total denial. He didn't even cry at the funeral. It's inedible. <laughs> Um, you're lucky your mom cooks. My mom just orders pizza most nights. You're lucky you're allowed to eat pizza. You're not allowed to eat pizza? Well, we can now, I guess. My mom was Buddhist last year, so we weren't allowed to eat animal products. Wait, your mom was Buddhist last year, but not this year? <laughs> That's sort of what she does. She gets into different things for a while. It was Pilates, then The Secret, then Buddhism. Now it's free range omnivores dilemma, whatever. <laughs> I guess it's nice she's into uh, different things. Like. She's not. That's just what happens when you're rich and you don't have a job. You get crazy. <laughs> well, my mom says better to be rich than poor. Your mom's probably never been rich then. Well, then you've never been poor then. Oh, oh I, I'm so sorry. It's, um, I, I didn't mean to. That, that's completely rude. I, I didn't realize you were actually capable of saying something that wasn't Wait, nice. Wait, no, no. I don't see things that aren't nice. I don't know why I thought of it. It's just, I'm really sorry. It's I was impressed. You're ruining it. I, I'm sorry. It's you really don't have to keep saying that. Um, okay. It's you want to say it again, don't you? <laughs> Very much. <laughs> You're weird. I, I know. <laughs> why did she say that in her note? Because there's Zoe. All my hope is pinned on Zoe, who I don't even know and who doesn't even know me. Why did she say that? What does that mean? Well, um, I, 
I'm not sure. It's definitely it, but I, I guess she 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 thought you know she wanted to be you guys to be you know closer. We weren't close at all. No, no exactly. So um, she 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 wished she was up. She wanted to be. So you and Cassie, you guys would talk about me. I mean, sometimes if she brought it up. I mean, I have brought it up. Why would I bring it up? It's um, well, but like, she thought you were uh, awesome. She thought I was awesome. My sister. <laughs> yeah, definitely. How? Oh well, um, well, you know when you do a solo in the jazz band, you you close your eyes and you get this half smile. Like you probably don't know if you're doing this, but. It's like you've heard the funniest thing in the world, and but you can't tell anyone. Like it's a secret. But the way you smile, it's like you're letting us on the secret too. You know the first time Cassie ever said anything nice about me in a note, a note she wrote to you. She couldn't even tell it to me. Well, she, she wanted to. She just she couldn't. Did she say anything else about you? Never mind. No, 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 no. She, she. she Oh, uh, she 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 said so many things about you. I just uh, I'm just trying to remember. It's um um she said that um uh, you're really really pretty and and you know it was super cool when you had those indigo streaks in your hair and and <laughs> and also you know how you dance like nobody existed and then but she, she didn't say it out loud. She just seemed so far away. It's like I don't know. Nobody really 
cares about people like us? People like us? Cassie Murphy, the kid who threw the printer at Mrs. Jean's second grade. Or dear Elvin Hansen, the guy who stood outside a jazz band concert trying to talk to Zoe Murphy, but his hands were too sweaty. You know, people like that. Look. Cassie meant so much to people. Oh, Cassie was one of my closest acquaintances. Because no one deserves to be forgotten. No one deserves to disappear. No one deserves to disappear. No one deserves to disappear. She's going to go to different parties every Saturday. Um, I, I took her out to get dresses, shoes, a watch. But she didn't get invited to a single one. I, I thought you could use this for tomorrow, for the assembly. What? <laughs> well, Alana said that anyone who wanted to could say something at the speech tomorrow. And I think we all assumed that you'd be the first one to sign up. A speech? Oh, well, uh, I'm not sure because I don't do any good with public speaking and then and then I get nervous and then and I have sweaty hands and, then, and, and you don't want to push me. Please, of course I would want you to. You're gonna do amazing, okay? Just think about it. We all want you to speak something. <laughs> Good morning, 
students and faculty, I would like to talk about my best friend, Cassie Murphy. I would like to talk about the time we went to the Autumn Smile Apple Orchard. Cassie and I, we stood under an oak tree and she wondered what it looked from up so high. And so we tipped, we ran to the tree and started climbing it slowly one branch at a time. And when I looked back, we were already 30 feet off the ground. And when I looked at Cassie, she, she gave me that smile, like, like she always did. And then, then I fell. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting Act Two of Dear Evan Hans. Hey everybody, it's me, Lana, Connor Project Co-President, Associate Treasurer, Media Consultant, Chief Technology Officer, Assistant Creative Director, slash Public Policy Director for Public Policy Initiatives, for the Connor Project. Uh, hi, I'm, I'm Evan. I'm the co-president of the Connor Project. Wish I could see all of your amazing faces out there. Hope you're having an amazing day. Now, I know a lot of you guys have seen the inspirational videos on our website. Thank you so much for checking out the awesome new videos we posted this week with Mr. and Mrs. Murphy, Connor's sister Zoe, and Connor's best friend, my co-president, Evan Hansen! Uh, as you know, uh, Connor's favorite place in the entire world was the incredible Autumn Smile Apple Orchard. The stunning Autumn Smile Apple Orchard, which tragically shut down seven years ago. Co Connor loved trees. Connor was obsessed with trees. He and uh, Evan used to spend hours together sitting at the orchard, looking at the trees, being with the trees, and sharing fun facts they knew about those trees. But the one thing Connor wished more than anything was that someday the orchard would be brought back to life, which is where you come in. Because today we are starting a major Kickstarter campaign, one of the most ambitious Kickstarter initiatives since the internet was first created to raise $50,000. $50,000 in three weeks. It's a lot of money, I know. But it's also not amazing. So let's do it, guys, and make the Connor Murphy Memorial Orchard not just a dream, but a reality. Hansen. Life at rehab is all right. I like the yoga and the sharing circles every night. But 
Dude, these stories sometimes scare you half to death. So many people would do anything to forget. Oh, and one more thing that's worth mentioning. That guy from school, Jared Klayman. Yes, the insanely cool Jared Klayman. I think we should start and make him a part of this awesome friendship we have. A part of this awesome friendship we have? Seriously? A part of this adorably heartwarming friendship we have. <laughs>
Oh, I haven't needed them. So no anxiety or even with everything that I've been fine. Well, that's great. Sounds like your thirsty yourself must have really helped, huh? I guess so. Well, don't stay up too late. Jim Palmer, Brooks Robinson. Here's the entire 96 team. Look at that. Wow. You got the right people to come to an auction like this. Baseball fans. I bet you could raise a thousand bucks to the orchard. Easy. Uh, no, it's a great idea. I'm definitely going to talk to Alana about it. I swear I have a Cal Ripken here somewhere. Th this is really generous of you to donate all this stuff. Dad, mom says that your show is on and she doesn't want to DVR it again. Well, tell her we're busy. With what? Uh, your dad had a good idea for the orchard. To do an auction. Evan's helping me go through my collection here. Dad, are you torturing him? What? Evan, is he torturing you? No, what? You can tell him he's being boring and that you want to leave. He won't be upset. He can leave whenever he wants. I, I don't want to leave. Evan, do you want to leave? <laughs> if you want to leave. I, I don't want to leave. <laughs> okay, don't say I didn't warn you. <laughs> Women, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, um, you and Zoe... Oh, wow, look at this glove. It's <laughs> really cool. You feel how stiff the leather is? <laughs> For sure. Never been used. You probably have your own glove at home, I'm sure. Uh, oh, uh, somewhere. I mean, I'm not sure if, if it even fits anymore. You know what? Why don't you take this one, then? Oh, no, no, I, I couldn't. I mean, uh, it sounds like if you need a new glove, this one's just going to sit here collecting dust. Uh, are you sure? I bought this glove a thousand years ago. <laughs> for some Christmas or some birthday that's come and gone. I thought we might play catch or I don't know. But he left it in the bag with the tag still on. You'd have to break it in though first. You can't catch anything with it being that stiff. How do you break it in? Your dad never taught you how to break in a baseball glove? I, I guess not. Well, it's really a process that's quite precise. The sort of secret method known to very few. So, if you're in the market for professional advice, today could be a lucky day for you. Shaving cream. <laughs> Shaving cream? Oh yeah. You rub that in for about five minutes, then you tie all up the rubber bands, put it under your mattress and sleep on it. And you've got to do it for at least a week. Every day. Consistent. And though this method isn't easy, every second that you spend is going to pay off. It will pay off in the end. It just takes a little time, a little patience, a little perseverance. You might not think it's worth it, you might begin to doubt, but you've got to stick it out. And it's the hard way, but it's the right way. The right way to break in a glove. Nowadays, with your generation, I hate to say it, but it's all about instant gratification. I mean, who wants to read a book when you can read Facebook itself? <laughs> with something like this, you have to be ready to put in the work, make the commitment. What do you think? I mean, definitely. <laughs> Some people say just use a microwave or try that running through hot water technique. Well, they can gloat about all the time they save till they got a man on the glove next week. It just takes a little patience. It takes a little patience. Even when everyone around you thinks you're crazy, even when everyone around you lets things go, you keep going. Connor was really lucky to have a dad who cared so much about taking care of stuff. Your dad must have felt pretty lucky to have a son like you. Yeah, yeah, he, he does. Uh, so, if you want to go catch up with Zoe... I, I don't know why I said that.
said that about my dad. It's not true. He and my stepmom, they got divorced when I was seven. And he and my stepmom, they have kids of their own now. So that's sort of his priority. Also, I'm sending you a list of 
questions because some of your emails do not make any sense. What? Well, like you've been telling everybody that the first time you went to the orchard was the day you broke your arm, but then other emails you talk about going there since last November. Uh, well, I, I mean, those are those are just probably typos, and I think you're reading into that like way, way too much. Yeah. You can answer all of that yourself when I send you those list of questions. You know how much the community loves. So my parents are out of town this weekend. Anybody wants to come over? I can't this weekend. I have to raise seventeen thousand dollars. <laughs> remember the condo project? You're supposed to be working on this. Uh, remember you told me you did not need my help. Look, I didn't tell you to do nothing. I know you think this is all a joke, but it's important. For Connor. Yeah. You know when you really stop and think about it, Connor being dead and all. That's pretty much the best thing that has ever happened to me, isn't it? <laughs> That's a horrible thing to say. <laughs> well, then, no, think about it. If Connor hadn't died, no one would even know who you are. Now, people actually talk to you. You're almost popular. <laughs> wonder of wonders, miracle of miracles. <laughs> I don't care about any of that. I don't care if people at school know who I am. All I wanted to do was to help the Murphys. Help the Murphys, I know. You keep on saying that. Hey, Jared. Hi. Look at you. Helping the Murphys. <laughs> uh, what was that about? It's nothing. You're studying to be a lawyer. Paralegal. You're kidding. I had no idea. Aren't you? They're always looking for paralegals. My firm will literally always in the search for new paralegals. <laughs> well, I have another year to go before I even... Well, then you should take my card and when you graduate, you should absolutely... That is a great idea. Kismat. Oh no, you don't have to do that. It's Kismat. Well, <laughs> thank you. Is coffee okay, Heidi? Black would be great. The coffee is from a farm right outside Ethiopia. The whole production process is 100% sustainable. They had a whole feature on them in the New York Times and everything. It's just incredible. Not to mention, it tastes good too. <laughs> I'm so glad you called in this morning. I've been agonizing over whether it was appropriate for me to reach out. Oh, Heidi, we have to. I mean, Ivan says you're so busy, we don't know if we should bother you. I'm not that busy. Well, we had asked Ivan if you minded him staying over so much, and he said it wasn't a big deal because of your schedule, you know, with classes and work. He spent so much time here. Evan's been a real source of inspiration and comfort for us these past few months. <laughs> Him and Connor, they were very close. I have to admit, I had no idea he and Connor were... We were the same. Well, boys, you know them. They just love to keep secrets. <laughs> we'd never heard about Evan. We'd never met him. Evan didn't tell me anything. Well, secret handshakes, secret rehearsals. Suddenly, Dan was wrong again. Oh, well, we were just in here having a cup of coffee, getting to know each other. We invite your mom to come join us for dinner tonight. Oh, I didn't realize that you were well, joining us too. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't think to tell you. Hi, I'm Zoe. It's so nice to meet you finally. <laughs> oh, good. Did you know about this? It was kind of my idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, why don't you guys take a seat? We were just talking about how close you and Connor were. Top secret. Oh, there's something, something smells good. Chicken Melanie's. <laughs> I didn't realize you were spending so much time here. You've, you've been working a lot. Why did I think you were at Jared's? I don't know. Uh, well, Evan, you do tell your mom when you're staying the night, right? <laughs> of course. 
You can rest assured, we take very good care of Evan. He has a toothbrush, so we're not sending him to bed with cavities. <laughs> <laughs> How nice. Um, so Evan was showing me all those scholarship contests he found. There were like a million. Well, Evan is a great writer. I don't find that hard to believe at all. His teacher last year for English said he wrote one of the best papers she'd ever read about Sulu. How about that? It's Sula. What did I say? Sulu. Oh. <laughs> Sulu is a character on Star Trek, I believe. <laughs> My mistake. Um, speaking of scholarships. Uh, I guess now is a good time as any. Uh, Cynthia, do you want to? Yeah, well, Zoe happened to mention that Evan was struggling with some of the financial burdens of college, and me and Larry have been fortunate enough to have set aside some money for our son. And, you know, Heidi, we invited you here today to have dinner with us because we had wanted to thank you for bringing Evan into our lives. He has been such a great comfort to us, and we've just begun to love him to pieces. And with your blessing, we would like to give the money that we had raised for our son to Evan so he can fulfill his dreams, just like he helped Connor fulfill his. What do you think? I don't know what to say. It would be such a gift if you could do this for Evan. It would be a tremendous gift, Heidi. Well, thank you, but I don't have a lot of money, but I do have some. Oh no, we didn't mean at all. No, no, I understand, it's just, I do have money, so I'm sorry you were under the impression that I didn't. And all the money that I don't have, Evan will either get a scholarship or go to public school, and I think that's best for us to do. I don't want Evan to get the idea that it's okay to rely on others for favors. It's not a favor. No, but as his mother, I need to set an example for him that you can't expect things from strangers. We are not strangers. No, of course not. Thanks for the coffee, it was delicious. <laughs> You're not staying for dinner? I think I'd better go to work after all. If I'd known Evan was so concerned about our finances, I would never have taken the night off in the first place. Oh. Woo! Woo!
We need more emails. The emails showing that he was getting worse. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
starting to wonder if that's even true. Well, what is that supposed to mean? You keep saying you were best friends. You're like a broken, freaking record about it. But you know something? Nobody ever saw the two of you together. Nobody even knew that you were friends. It was a secret. He didn't want us to talk at school. I know the story, Evan. We all know the story. We've all heard it a bazillion times. You've seen the emails. Do you know how easy it is to create a fake email account and back the emails? <laughs> because I do. You know what? I don't have time for this. I have to raise seventeen thousand dollars. I can prove it. How? Here. If we weren't best friends, then why did you write a suicide note to me?
But the orchard, you knew about the orchard. He took you to the orchard. Th that's where you broke your arm. I broke my arm at Ellison Park by myself. But the orchard, you and Connor at the orchard. Words fail, words fail. There's nothing I can say. But you told me that he would, that you would talk about me and that he, how could you do this?
I will take your hands, squeeze it tightly and say, there's not another truck in the driveway. Your mom isn't going anywhere. Your mom will be right here. No matter what, I'll be here. When it all feels so big, when it all feels so small, you'll see. I promise.
Have you ever felt forgotten in the middle of nowhere? Have you ever felt like you could disappear? So let the lonely feeling wash away Cause maybe there's a reason to believe you'll be okay So when you don't feel strong enough to stand You can reach, reach out your hand
Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. A huge thank you to Camerata. Aren't they just beautiful? Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think music has, and art has a beautiful way of reaching those parts of your heart that even words cannot, uh, cannot touch, right? And for that, we are so deeply grateful to you. Um, Camerata, by the way, is going to have their own space up soon, right? Yes. How long is there? Our, our musical director. <laughs> and this one deserves, I think, a standing ovation. Our incredible actors, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs>
queen of chaos without whom I cannot imagine a single day. Her family is my family. My wonderful, wonderful Alba and the head of the Guys, come here. Come here.